G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the west side of the map in the color yellow playing as the French. We've got Cosmos. And on the east side of the map in the color purple playing as the Chinese. We've got Kalp. You know, I, uh, I actually reached out to Kalp a couple months ago. I think right before Outback Octagon and I said to him, yo Kalp. How do I pronounce your name? Because I've casted a lot of Kalp games and I don't actually know how to pronounce it. And he sent me a YouTube link to a StarCraft game where he was introduced and the the commentator basically just said Kalp. But it was a very German way because obviously for anyone who doesn't know, Kalp is German. Uh, so it was uh, it was very Kalp. It was it was it was authentic. Anyway, welcome welcome to a caster game. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can catch Cap live over on Twitch. I've been watching a lot of Cap games lately. Obviously, you guys may have seen the games that were uploaded before this on the channel. They both featured Cap. I've been loving it. Cap Cap is is to me. I saw one comment that said Cap is like the new salami. He's just doing crazy stuff. He doesn't care whether he wins or loses. He just goes crazy, and I like that. I like that a lot. So I'm curious what we see today. This is one of those matchups where. You're playing against a civilization that you have a disadvantage against, or at least that's the way it feels like in the early game. Going up against French Knights is difficult. So I'm curious what Cap looks to do to overcome the enemy. Now, another thing to note as well, uh, that uh, I've, I've actually been, you, you may have noticed there's been a little bit of a decline with content on the channel in just the last couple of days. I've gone from two videos a day to one video a day. That's just because I've been building up a new PC. I've, I've actually got my dad over at the moment, so for anyone who doesn't know, I, my hometown is uh, is a different city than uh, than the one I actually live in. So my dad, uh, he, he's visiting with my brother, and uh, and we're all hanging out, and uh, and we're building a PC. So hopefully it should be ready to go. This 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 is probably going to be the last video I do on this PC. But essentially, just to give you a, a bit of an idea, uh, because obviously this content is is made in 4K uh, and it's 60 FPS, and that, that takes quite a bit of work uh, from the processor side and the graphics side. Uh, that uh, realistically you have to go for a two PC setup, which means that you've got one PC that's playing the game and then the other PC is recording and streaming the game. And hopefully the PC that I've built should be able to do both of those things. It might not seem like a big deal, but it, it, it really is a big deal. You can see as an example how we're locked to 60 FPS here. Uh, well, on the other PC that we won't be locked to 60 F FPS and that's because of the, the two PC setup. Anyway, you know what? You guys don't probably need to know about that. All you need to know is that there'll be more content coming out. And, uh, and if you like the content, please do like the video because it does definitely help with the channel. So let's talk a little bit about this matchup. We obviously spoke earlier about the fact it doesn't really favor the the, uh, the Chinese, at least early on. So that's largely because of, what was that? Why did I hear a delete? What, what's going on over here? Did this madman just delete his house? He's 15 out of 10. He deleted, <laughs> oh, Calp, you are impressive. I, I will say that. He, he, he knows when he's made a mistake and he just accepts it. Mad respect right there. He lost 15 seconds of town center time. He lost his 50 wood. Th that, I got mad respect for the guy. Deletes the house to put down the Imperial Academy in the perfect place. He saw that he could get the wood line and get the, the gold mine, but he would have to delete the house for it. So what did he do? He deleted the house. There you go. So age up coming through now. And we can see this is a really early age up coming through right now from Cosmos over on the other side of the map. And we can see he hasn't even gone for that mill early. Often you see players go for that mill, look to try and get out that wheelbarrow. But he has gone for a super early night here. This is crazy. And this is part of the reason why uh, the French is so good against the Chinese. Because if they play a 1TC style, it can be pretty difficult as Chinese to actually beat them. Uh, just simply because they're, they, they've, uh, the fact that they train their villagers faster means that Song Dynasty doesn't really have its bonus and you need to pay for that Song Dynasty bonus uh, as well. But let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Cap and what options he's got available to him. We're right on board now with him as his scout is making his way across the front of the enemy base. Does spot out the knight at 4 minutes and 20 seconds. That's a decent time. Let's We can say that much. And immediately you see what Cap's done here. This is... This is oh, Cap just knows exactly what to do. Oh, he's being so cheeky. And look, this is this is absolutely great for Cap right now because what's he doing is buying time. Barbican of the Sun needs to come up. And you can see right here that the Barbican is coming up. So he's hoping that this doesn't get spotted out by Cosmos because that knight was running in the direction. You can see the knight's going to be coming through now. Uh, but the reason why this was so smart by Kalp is because what what uh, Kalp wants to do is delay this knight as much as possible. Now, to be fair, the knight did just kill three sheep, which is actually pretty decent. Uh, so that, that's uh, well played by Cosmos there. Definitely a little bit of a miscalculation from, from Kalp, I'd suggest. But 
overall, I, I, I still think it's a decent trade. And I think the French is, is going to be quite happy with that. But the Barbican comes up towards this top side. He'll be able to, to grab the boar. Oh, and you can see that he's actually luring the boar away. This could be really bad, actually, for, for Kalp. If, if he's able to steal this boar... Oh, this is massive when you think about it. Okay, so Kalp was actually lining up to take this boar. And then Cosmos comes up and he's like, actually, I'm not going to let you have this boar. I'm going to kill it out here. So now if you want it, it's not going to be underneath your Barbican where it's safe. It's going to be all the way out over here. So you can still come grab it, and I'm, but I'm just going to be able to kill your villagers or at least kill them a lot e more easily. But anyway, we move on. We move forward. Let's check in over with Cosmos and see how he's doing as he's begun to throw down the archery range. So starting to step up that... That huge amount of military early on. And you can see the struggle that's going on right now for Cap as the villagers idle out. A couple of them going to pop out over onto the wood. And I'm curious what angle he looks to play here. But I would suspect early on it's probably just going to be Spears. But knowing Cap and seeing the way that he plays Longbow, I really wouldn't be surprised if he just goes into Mashuguno now that I think about it. Which is kind of dangerous to do in this matchup. And it's something that I often talk about. And the reason why is because of the break points of the Royal Knight. So you can see that it's got three armor which will go up to four armor with plus one. And you're up against the Shukunu, which has got four damage. And that goes up to five damage. We do see the, the, the scout actually goes down. So a little bit of a mistake right there from Kalp. He's outnumbered six to one. Or six to six to none, rather, uh, when it comes to the uh, the amount. But it, it, it's going to be barracks opening. So it definitely makes sense. But yeah, the, the Shukunu basically does only one damage to the Royal Knights with each of its attacks. So it, it does really hurt. And look at the amount of damage that's coming in already. Really aggress aggressive play from Cosmos here. Now, keep in mind, both of these players are Conqueror 3. Really good players. So any mistakes you do see happening, well, they're not really mistakes. It's more like an, unfor not a, an unforced error, rather, a forced error. Let's, let's put it that way uh, that, that's happening. But we do now see the Supervised Spearman going to be coming out here for Kalp. He'll be looking to put down a solid defense, but Cosmos, obviously seeing the Spearman, says, all right, well, that's fine. I'm just going to try and bait you away with my one knight towards the north and down towards the south. I'm going to bring in my knights and look to attack you there. So really smart move coming in from Cosmos. And look at this. He's just all over it right now. Poor Kalp. He is really suffering a lot of damage here. Looks like he will lose the scout for his effort. Oh, yep. There we go. Scout does go down. Leaves a couple of sheep there. So that, those three sheep we were talking about earlier. Hello. That's, that's their mine now. Anyway, up towards the north. Imperial official is out. Only the eight villagers here. Keep in mind, there's only eight garrison space in here. So one of those villagers may be in trouble a little bit later on. Checking back in over with Cosmos, though. It looks like... Look at the amount of villagers he's got on gold. Why do we have this many vills on gold, Cosmos? What are we doing back here? Are we looking for double broadaxe? Are we looking for specialized pick? Are we maybe looking to throw down a mill? If that's the case, then I can support that. But let, let's... We want to try and spend those resources as quickly as we can. We want to avoid stacking them up like that. But I, I'll be honest. I'm impressed with Cosmos and his early game micro. That has been really nice. And there we go. We do see the wheelbarrow is coming through for Cosmos. Where is the mill, though? Oh, he's gone out onto the hunt. Okay, so instead of going for survival techniques, goes for wheelbarrow first. So I'd say that's a little bit of a, of a mistake, especially when you're out on the hunt and you've got this many fills out here. I still think probably survival techniques into wheelbarrow, into horticulture would have been absolutely fine here. But hopefully he looks to spend some of this gold because this gold is really starting to stack up now. But over towards the enemy base, we do start to see the archery range beginning to come up. Knight comes in, not going to be able to take too much damage there. The spear's doing a decent job. At the same time, two knights coming in from the south side. Might even lose a spearman right here. Does indeed take out a spearman, and he's got the number advantage, or at least had the number advantage, and tries... He's got to get the Imperial official. Really well played there, coming out from Cosmos, but trying his best. The Royal Knight might cop one last hit. There it goes. <laughs> Don't you hate to see that? Scout comes out. He says, I'll take those sheep. Wait, wait, wait. The sheep... They hold their allegiance to the knight? I thought the sheep didn't hold their allegiance to anybody but scouts, town centers, and gurs. I guess that changed. I guess that changed today. Anyway, I I'm looking for any sign of a second town center, and I don't see it yet, which is really curious, especially considering how heavy Cosmos is on, on the mining at the moment. But Kalp now going to start adding in more and more spears. We can see he's up to seven spears, three Shukunu in queue. And now there's a little bit of trouble in Paradise right now as Cosmos going to be looking to defend up against... This, this rogue attack. Look at the spears on the front line. He's just got to kite this away. I don't think he can stay here for the moment. We do see he loses a scout again. And manages to hold on with the archers. So, Cap making the decision. You know what? I'm not going to sacrifice my spears. There is a risk that my enemy looks to try and kite me. And now, triple archery range coming down. 
against the French. This is so dangerous to do. This is so, so dangerous to do. Part of the reason why I love playing um, the Chinese against the French is because you, you can just play Spearman Horsemen. And I think that's really good because you can get more food out of your food sources than anybody else can. So when you think about like other civilizations, or, oh, you know, you've got the Sepahi or, or oh, you've got the, the Ghazi Raider. Yeah, sure. But the Chinese have got 20% extra food out of every single source. So that's always something I like to consider. And part of the reason why they're so good uh, towards the later feudal stages against the uh, against the French. But we could always look to see Cosmos moving into something like a barracks. And speaking of Cosmos, when, when I said Cosmos, I thought of Carl Sagan. And then I thought of aliens. You know, we, we don't talk enough about aliens on this channel. Uh, you know, th there has not been enough alien talk. If, if you want to talk about aliens, let me, <laughs> let me know down in the comments. We will talk about aliens, all right? Because there's some good stuff that's coming up right now. I'm, I'm just saying it, all right? There's, if you haven't been watching it, d go right now, do a Google search for aliens, and you'll see some good stuff in there. It's happening right now in the United States Senate. We, we There was a big, big stuff going on there. Anyway, I, I'm loving it. Uh, look, I don't necessarily believe it, but I do find it very interesting. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, we've got more upgrades starting to coming in. It's going to be the double broad axe coming through here for Kalp. Uh, let's take a look and see what other upgrades we've gotten. Really not a lot of upgrades here. Uh, so could be looking to try and go big. And you can see that he's indeed going big. And I love the fact that he's only committing to the one TC. Because a lot of people playing Chinese at this point would have thought about a second uh, TC. Especially after losing these villages early. But I love the aggression that's coming out from him. But now, continuing to push up, loses a couple of villagers here. Manages to take out plenty of them. Shukunu going to be starting to push up as well. Plus one range attack in, or almost in rather. Over on the other side, Cosmos yet to get any upgrades in. In fact, doesn't even have the blacksmith down at 11 minutes. A little bit of a mistake right there from Cosmos. Spearman numbers though, starting to fall. And you can see nice micro coming out at the moment. Cap going to be looking to do his best. And now, unfortunately, those spears, once they, once they are eliminated... Oh, I, I take it back. I take it back. The Shukunu have got their plus one in right now. They can they can take down any amount of these knights right now. Bring in 50 knights. The Shukunu will take them down. These guys do so much damage. Just that extra damage is double damage. Think about it for a second. You've gone from four damage to five damage. Your enemy's got three armor. So you've gone from one effective damage to two effective damage. It's double damage. This guy just... He was coming down the river, picked up the DD rune, and that's it. Now you've got 20 guys that are all buffed up with double damage. That's how powerful that is. But... Over towards the base of Cap, and we see what we suspected could be the case from the Madman. It is going to be a huge amount of Chukunu in a matchup that is notoriously dangerous to do it in. Up against the Knight, a unit that, as you guys will know, Knight superiority is a reality when it comes to these games. If you are able to deny your enemy from having a significant mass of Spearmen and you're able to take them out, and as long as you've got those Knight numbers, you can win the game. As long, if you maintain those knight numbers. So that's knight superiority because it allows you to go into the enemy base, camp their production so that when a unit comes out, you kill it instantly. They can never rebuild. And on top of that, you camp their resources, which means that their villagers have to go inside the town center, which means they don't have enough resources to make more units. And then they have to surrender because they can't do anything else. It's really powerful. But now we see that scout moving out. Unfortunately, going to be losing its life very quickly. It did call out to Cosmos, but Cosmos... Did not, uh, did not react in time. And finally, that blacksmith has come up. Ranged armor now going to be coming through for him. He's got 55 seconds that he needs to wait before he fights against Cap. It is imperative that he fights after that ranged armor comes through. He must fight after the ranged armor. And ideally, I'd love to see a couple more stables thrown down. Okay, there we go. Good. He's thrown down a second stable, which is perfect. That's exactly what he needed to do here because the night numbers are really starting to dwindle. And I can feel the advantage starting to shift in favor of Cap, especially now considering Cap is up to 39 Jukunu and only two Spearmen. Now, let's talk a little bit about breakpoints. We spoke earlier about the, the interactions between the Jukunu, the knight, and all the different ways that the armor works together. But the Royal Knight's got 190 health. That means if you want to one-shot one of these guys, you're going to need 64 Jukunu. That's a lot. That's a lot. Cap's only got 43. And he's going to start losing out on these reinforcements as well. Ranged armor's still not in, so if he's going to be really careful here. One of these <laughs> these knights will die very quickly if he's not careful. But he's just heading up the aisle right now like a bride on a wedding day, just trying his best to take down everybody in his path. Fortunately, he hasn't had too much to drink like the bride, and he's able to do it. Gets out of there alive. Good to see. And it looks like that, that boar did eventually get taken up here by Kalp. 1100... 1100 meat on that bad boy 1100 food on that bad boy and we've got trade we saw this a little bit earlier but i don't think we talked about it and this is the some of the most bold trade i think i've ever seen does cap know about this 
uh, well, uh, we won't know if we're looking from Cosmos' perspective right now. Range dub is through. So he's only going to be taking one damage. Needs to get these guys back, though. He, he needs to bring these back. Yeah, there we go. Okay, he's doing the right thing. Needs to bring them back, making sure that the, the ones with the low health are going to go back and heal up. And just continuing to pick up reinforcements. Really well played here by Cosmos. This is exactly what you want to be doing in this position. Meanwhile, as long as he's making units at home, he's going to be okay. That's the key. At home, he needs to keep making units. Keep the villagers back. Oh, no. And the traders get spotted. The traders have been spotted. Now, how much How much are these guys making? What do you, what do you guys reckon? I'm going to go with, like, 91. Let's go. 91. All right, here we go. Oh, I was close. 76. It wasn't really that close. Shukunu, now starting to build that siege up. 44 Shukunu out here. Now remember, these knights are going to be able to come back. But he's going to be able to kite them away. So you've got to be so careful when you pick your engagements here. This is not enough. This is not enough knights. You can't fight this Cosmos. Not now. You need slightly more knights. It, it, it's crazy the way, the way that you can tell it. But he's going to look to try and kite these down one by one. There goes the first knight. Second knight gets focused. Third knight, you're going to go. You're going to go sleepy bye byes. There you go. There's the fourth one. He just doesn't have enough. But he's still managing to do some decent damage here. Chukunu number starting to fall. He's down to 31. He's managed to go through about 25% of them so far. But you can see just how badly the knights are getting taken out here. And this is the difference that that critical mass makes. If he just waited for three or four more knights, it would have made all the difference here. The speed in which they, they took out the Chukunu would have made all the difference. And now you can see they're going to be able to get away. But there's more knights starting to rally in here. But that, that could have been the difference between, you know, your enemy getting away with 16 Chukunu and now more coming in, reuniting with the originals. You can see just how much damage these guys are able to do. He is kiting from heaven. What, what's, what's the saying? Heaven to high hell? Heaven to high... Some hell to high heaven? I don't know exactly what, what, what the saying is, but we've got plus one ranged attack versus plus one ranged attack on both sides here. And now the Chukunu are going to show exactly where they excel against unarmored targets. Look how much damage is able to do the, to this front line. But now continuing to fight up against these these knights as they begin to charge in. Cosmos needs to find himself a, a point where he can just kind of fall back. And now we see, oh, horsemen coming in. This is painful to watch. He needs to just fall back, retreat, stay alive for a little bit longer and build up that night mass. But unfortunately, he just took the fight a little bit too early. And it's going to mean that this is a really tough spot to come back from. 15 Jukunu in queue right now for Cal. A huge amount of Chukunu. Who needs Spearman when you have Chukunu? These, these things literally just take out everything. Does this unit need to be nerfed more? When we think about this unit, right, it was it was recently nerfed. What? How did they nerf it? They changed the cost. So the cost used to be 20, 20, 30, or rather, uh, yeah, 20, 20, 30. Now it's 30, 20, 20. Rather, sorry. It used to be 20, 30, 30. Now it's 20. Now it's 30. Oh my God. Anyway, they switched the 30 gold became 20 gold and 20 food became 30 food. Does it need to be changed more than that? And if so, how would you possibly do it? Because this unit still seems like an absolute powerhouse in the feudal age. Even in the castle age, right? we've seen Marine Lord on the Chinese playing just heavy amounts of Shukunu. And obviously he transitions out of them. He goes into a crossbow mix, but they're still really potent. Gets those early plus two upgrades, that the early uh, the early veterancy. They do a lot of damage. And now we can see that Cosmos is looking to fight with only just a handful of uh, a handful of knights. Honestly, at this point, what Cosmos needs to do, he just needs to back up, throw down a couple more stables, and, and really look to mass up those knights as much as he possibly can. Looks like he's resumed with trade on the backside instead. This is going to be a little bit less gold. Let's check and see how much gold he's getting through on this one from 76 down to 31. Yikes. That is painful, but it looks like he manages to hold over on the front. Archers up against the Jukunu. And at this point, you just want to stop making archers, right? You're not seeing any spears out from your enemy. You're only seeing Jukunu. So all you need to, all you want to make at this point is just, that's it. Like just knights. You can throw in like knights and horsemen together if, if that, those are the resources you've got. But ideally, yeah, you want to avoid making these archers. Archers are great if your enemy's got spears. But you've got to remember, you counter what, what you see your enemy has, not what you think they have. So that's really important. But now he's got a bit of an opportunity to sit back, build up, at the same time from Cap, we don't see any indication that he's going to be going to Castle. We don't see any indication he's going to switch it up with a second town center. In fact, he's just going to start adding in granaries. Really, really nice play here from Cap. And if anything, you could argue that this is kind of a boost to the Chinese in, in the sense that now they've got extra food or, or they have a, a unit that requires more food. And so they can justify going onto the granaries a little bit sooner, maybe. I don't know if that's... No, you know what? It's, it's objectively a nerf. Gold is definitely... Oh, maybe... No, I don't know. I don't know. I'm on the fence about it. Was it a nerf? Was it a buff? Because it, it, it was definitely designed to slow down the Jukunu. But if you if you make transitioning to farms as part of your plan, 
with 20% bonus wood gathering from your Imperial official together with your your double broad axe. There's something to be said. Not, not to mention the fact, I think Granary's got cheaper, right? Was it Granary's that got cheaper? No, it was the village that got cheaper. No, no, no I, I, I must be crazy right now. I, I'm, I'm looking at things and wondering what, where where these uh, where these numbers are coming from. And speaking of where things are coming from right now, take a look at this. Jukanu push is really coming out. 73 Jukanus. He's hit critical mass. That's enough to actually one shot a knight. And look at the damage coming out. I think this might be a good game here. He's stepping up. Look at the way he steps up. It in indeed, it is a good game. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you check out Cap. He's probably live over on Twitch right now. I will leave a link in the description of where you can watch him live. And make sure you leave a like if you've enjoyed this video. Anyway, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.